an unlikely love story, an unlikely romantic hero. I used to drive a cab and I saw her. I drive her to work and home. I felt I had to speak to her. Day after day, I tell her I loved her. At the height of Iraq's civil war, Hassan and Zahra defied the world around them to be together. Shia, Sunni, Turkmen, I want this girl. They said, she's not your kind, she's Shia. I said, no, either her or no one. One of my sisters called me and said, if you don't leave him, I won't speak to you and my husband will leave me. Do you accept that my children and I will be thrown out of our home? We stayed in the car, just crying. Harder times lay ahead after Zahra lost her leg in a bombing two years ago. But still, we've got a crazy love, they sing to each other. In a way, the story of Hassan and Zahra is not just a triumph of love over hate, but of ordinary people against powerful forces around them. A great sectarian divide is taking root in the region. More than ever before, it's affecting the behavior of states and the way people think. Most dangerously, it looks more and more like a zero-sum game, where one side's gain is the other side's loss. This is Fallujah. It saw some of the worst fighting during the war, and the scars are still visible. It's still unstable, and many here don't feel part of the new Iraq. Curious to see a TV crew, Abu Abed asks me what we're doing here. Exploring Iraq's sectarian divisions, I explain. That's all gone, he assures me. No more trouble. If only it were that simple. A lot of trouble seems to be lurking just around the corner. Abu Ahmad is in the Free Iraqi Army, formed to support the Free Syrian Army. We share the same goal, to end Shia expansion in the region. We support our brothers in different ways, including weapons and fighters, just like the Iranians and Hezbollah support the regime. But it's in Iraq that he's got scores to settle. After the fall of Bashar al-Assad, Iraq will have its turn. Today Bashar, tomorrow we bring down Maliki. Soon, God willing, the Shia expansion will stop. If his vision is to come true, it's young men like these who might have to act it out. In history class, these boys learn about struggles to control Iraq, four centuries ago. But in the playground, they just want to have some fun. And they were happy to welcome an outsider. To them, there are more important divisions than Sunni and Shia. But they do feel stuck. They only play here in school and because of the security situation, don't often meet kids from other parts of the country. They're not the only ones who feel trapped. How old were you in this picture? Time has taken its toll on Abu Muhannad, since the days when he was an officer in the former Iraqi army. He's been kept out of work as the government sought a clean break with the former regime. When you throw me away with all my service to Iraq and never ask me to come back or give me my rights, what do you expect, that I'll accept it? The people who built Iraq overnight, just gone with the wind, left to beg? We do not beg. We are Iraqis with our heads held high. So many like him were shut out as the new Iraq emerged. But others, long oppressed under Ba'athist rule, finally found their place. Across Iraq, there is a sense of resurgent Shia pride. Nowhere more so than here in Najaf. 
Shia clerics look down on you from everywhere. The colors on full display. Suppressed under Saddam, this place brims with newfound confidence. The whole city centers around this, the Imam Ali Shrine, one of the holiest places for Shia Muslims, drawing millions of visitors every year. It gave me goosebumps, a rush of faith and humility, like entering one of the gates of heaven. Here, Shia show their devotion to Imam Ali. They believe he should have succeeded the Prophet. The battle for succession was at the root of the Sunni-Shia divide. Today, the faithful look to senior clerics for guidance about everything, which gives them a lot of influence. Saddam Hussein feared their power so much that he killed many of them. Now they're on the rise again. And they say it's not a problem. Everyone, Christian, Sunni, Shia, want an overarching role for the clerical leadership because they've seen it's above sectarianism. The fears are from other practice that could be called sectarian. The clerics in Iran practice leadership in one way. Here in Iraq, it cannot be the same. Whether or not that calms Sunni fears, out on the streets, Shia fears are simmering too. People hesitate to talk about Iraq's sectarian divide, but they're all fired up about Syria. It's a Wahhabi war against Shia holy places, this man tells me. I will go fight in Syria, this man says, because it's the Shia who are the targets. Nejaf isn't just a magnet for the living, but also for the dead. This is the world's largest cemetery. Everyone wants to be buried here in holy soil. For a place of death, it strikes me how full of life it is. This doesn't stop, night and day, every day. The visitors keep coming to bury their dead and to visit the family dead from all over the Islamic world and sometimes beyond. And this huge cemetery keeps on expanding in all directions. Business is booming for the flower sellers, the motorcycle taxis, and of course, the undertakers. Abu Saif has been burying people here most of his life. At the height of Iraq's civil war, he'd bury hundreds a day. That's over in Iraq, he said, but a nasty wind is blowing from Syria. We've received a number of Iraqis who are living in Syria, civilians, not fighters. Some families from Najaf who were threatened and killed by terrorist gangs. First Iraq, now Syria. Who you are can still get you killed. And the grief too often only gives way to vengeance. How did it all get to be so bad? I sought out some learned advice. <laughs> <laughs> These two students of theology were remarkably relaxed about digging deeper into the question. There is a tendency to ride the waves of religion to reach political ends. From both sides? Undeniably, we do not claim to be angels. Politics is politics. Of course, politicians didn't invent the problem, but those with an eye on power used it, so it grew and became what it is today. A spirited discussion ensues. Is it about religious ideology or political power? And who can solve the problem? The solution isn't in the hands of the common man, it's in the hands of the elites. The common man doesn't have the means. With respect, I disagree. At the end of the day, it's all in the hands of the common man. Who empowers the elite? A large, if not the largest share of the ability to change is in the hands of the common man. Back and forth, they went on and on, and on. 
Time for me to go. There are places where none of this matters. Here, you can't tell who's Sunni or who's Shia. It's just Iraqis out for some fun. Maybe a bit crowded for Zahra and Hassan. They prefer their own little spot by the river. We Iraqis, when we love, we sacrifice. Hassan sacrifices, Zahra sacrifices. Thank God we are unshakable. Nothing can drive us apart. Sectarian war is looming again. It feeds on hatred and division, and it tears people apart. Hope comes in the bonds that hold together and in those who choose a different path.